The story of the Cliff House, a San Francisco landmark, is fabled in legends and twisted by tragedies, but what really happened to it? Hi everyone, Ken here. Welcome to this house. In 1863, the first Cliff House was built by Senator John Buckley and C.C. Butler, who opened its doors as a restaurant and saloon. Initially, it was a remote haven, accessible mostly by horseback and frequented by riders, hunters, and picnickers. As San Francisco grew and the city expanded its infrastructure, the establishment's fortunes changed with the opening of the Point Lobos Toll Road in 1864, making it a popular destination for San Francisco's carriage trade. The adjacent two-mile speedway added to its allure, drawing the city's elite to race their horses. Omnibuses, railways, and streetcars brought visitors to the edge of Golden Gate Park, from where stagecoaches completed the journey. The area's popularity surged partly due to the nearby seal rocks, a favorite spot for crowds of all ages to gather and watch sea lions. After two decades, Adolf Sutro, a silver magnate, purchased the Cliff House. His tenure saw both triumph and tragedy. In 1887, the North Wing was destroyed by an explosion from the grounded Schooner Parallel. Instead of abandoning the property, Sutro rebuilt the Cliff House, only to have it completely destroyed by fire seven years later. Undeterred, Sutro reconstructed it in 1896 as a seven-story Victorian-era chateau, affectionately known as the Gingerbread Palace. This period coincided with the construction of the nearby Sutro Baths, enhancing the area's recreational appeal. The Cliff House grew into more than just a restaurant and saloon. It was now a high-end hotel with lavish interiors. It became a gathering place for the social elite, where we can imagine men wearing their finest suits and ladies donning Victorian-era gowns strewn with pearls. From here, families could take a stroll along the beach as they made their way to the Sutro Baths, which boasted the world's largest indoor swimming pool. In addition to water slides and six saltwater pools, the Sutro Baths also included an amphitheater, skating rink, and a museum. As time went on, the ground surrounding both the Cliff House and Sutro Baths was landscaped with extensive gardens. All along the cliffside, marble statues dotted walking paths amidst hundreds of species of imported plants and flowers. If you are familiar with San Francisco's history, you already know that the 1906 earthquake nearly wiped the city off the face of the earth. Surprisingly, the cliff house and baths stood strong, with negligible damage. All was fine until the next year. On the 7th of September in 1907, just after the sun set, fire broke out. The flames were unable to be quelled and the inferno raged, consuming the cliff house for several days until there was hardly anything left of it. In 1909, Dr. Emma Merritt, Sutro's daughter, rebuilt the Cliff House in a more neoclassical style, which was very popular for the time. It retained its reputation for its excellent cuisine and breathtaking views, a favorite for both locals and tourists. In 1937, George and Leo Whitney purchased the Cliff House, transforming it into an American roadhouse and complementing their nearby Playland of the Beach attraction. Unfortunately, by 1966, the Sutro Baths required much needed maintenance, and the cost to restore the complex was astronomical. Developers made the tough decision to tear it down, but before it could be salvaged for its architectural elements, an arsonist burned it to the ground. As the ruins of the Sutro Baths became an iconic reminder of the site's storied past, the National Park Service acquired it and the Cliff House a decade later in 1977. A major renovation in 2003 restored the Cliff House to its 1909 glory, and the ruins of Sutro Baths became a popular tourist attraction in their own right. However, the events of 2020 and subsequent operational challenges led to the closure of the Cliff House. Four years later, and the future of this historic site remains uncertain, with ongoing discussions about its management and preservation. The Cliff House is more than just a restaurant or a building. It has been a witness to over a century of San Francisco's history. It has evolved with the times, faced and overcome adversity, and remained a beloved symbol of the city's spirit. Its story is not just about architecture or business but about the people of San Francisco and the countless visitors who've passed through its doors creating memories with their loved ones. If you've been following this channel for a while, you might remember a previous video I did about the Cliff House. I made that right after my car accident, and even though it got a lot of views, I always felt that I could have made the video much better. There are only a handful of other videos that I've been considering remaking, all from that same time period. Let me know if you would like to see any more remade. Also, tell me your thoughts about the Cliff House down below in the comments section. As always, thank you for watching and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss a fascinating episode of This House.